guys, Ethereal Light Art here. Welcome to this episode. Today we're going to teach you on how to draw a boom box. A lot of people have been asking me how I do this and I wanted to give a quick demonstration on this illustration. I have two light painting tools with me. One is the Light Painting Paradise Pencil, it's on white. The other one is the T1000 from Light Excursion. As you can see, they are two different sizes of brushes and I want that to actually give a little bit more uh, in-depth or different focal points in my boom box. And so basically, I have two starting points that's very important to actually get your peripheral edges down so you don't actually cross over. This is the no man's land. So once you get to your edges of your boom box, stop. And I know that's sometimes really hard in the dark. I've got two glow-in-the-dark stars to mark my border. Um, I'm also in my home studio today. You've seen the big one I did in the street uh, in the forest. Uh, I also spaced out that one proportionately. It's important for you to know the boundaries of your boom box or any illustration when you don't want to draw outside the lines. Okay guys, and so first I'm going to start with the Light Painting Paradise pencil. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to come up to my nose and eye level. That's just easy for me to work with. Uh, today I'm actually working on my knees in my studio. Sometimes I'll stand up and do it bigger, but for this demonstration I'm going to be on a smaller indoor boom box. I'm going to start with my lateral edge and I'm going to come up to my eye level and I'm going to stop. I'm going to take the bigger brush, which is the T1000, come straight across and then I'm going to come down. Now we've got the border of our boom box. I'm also going to take the T1000 and I'm going to do another line that's about three inches less. Because if you remember, those ghetto blasters had a thick plastic handle, uh, something to carry it with, kind of like an igloo cooler. And so I'm going to put this one away for now because this is the thick brush and now I want to do all the detail work. And so under the big thick handle, give it space for it to, to carry. You want the top of the boom box. So I'm on my lateral edge. I make a straight line and about the middle, I start making my buttons. And these are just straight uh, rectangles. When I get to two or three, I'm going to actually color this one in. And when you color it in, it's going to look like it's pressed. That's important. That's probably the easiest way to make this lifelike. Okay, so now I've got my buttons. You can do four or five buttons, whatever you want, six buttons. Just as long as one of them's pushed, that will actually activate the ghetto blaster. Okay, and so my next, next thing is, now I've got my body. I know that it's about right here. Okay. And so I've got this much space to work with, which is quite a bit. And so now I'm going to actually draw my tape deck. Now when you draw the tape deck, remember it's a rectangle, it's a horizontal rectangle. You want to be careful because your speakers are probably the most prominent and eye-catching part of this illustration. And so the tape deck is important, but it's important because of the space in the middle, not because of the detail uh, really of the tape deck. And so. We know that the line is here for the top of the boom box and the buttons. We want to come down just a little bit and we want to draw a rectangle right here. And so a rectangle is here, 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 and here. And again, proportionately, you want your width of the tape deck to be about twice as long as the height of the, of the tape deck. That just looks nice. Inside the tape deck, you want two proportionate circles. Here's one circle and if you remember, there's little spikes around the inside wheel and that pulls the tape through and so I want the other circle here and make sure you get your little spikes around the wheel to pull it through. Um, you could write a little name like Sony or Casio or any of those old brand names. Uh, you can put your own name. Uh, whatever you see fit. Okay, so now we've got a tape deck that's in the middle. We need to put our big speakers, and that's going to be the real eye-catcher of this piece. And so I'm going to work over here first. I know that my 
tape deck is here, and so my edge is here, and so now I have this much room for a speaker, okay? And so I'm gonna move my body over here. You always kinda wanna paint straight ahead of you. You don't wanna kinda paint to the side. It's always nice to be straight on, especially when you have borders to be mindful of. I'm going to do my circle technique, my hand circle technique. It's about here. As you can see, that my diameter of my circle is just touching this outside peripheral edge, as well as the tape deck inside. And so I'm going to sit here and go like this. When I have a good circle going, and this takes some practice, I'm going to hit the button. I'm gonna do about four or five revolutions. Too many can be a little bit scribbly and not enough can be not so thick. I could do it with the T1000, but I prefer to do it with the pencil because I wanna keep going. Now, the interesting thing about these speakers is that they're going to be drawn in 3D. So we have a good circle edge. Now we're gonna start at the top of the circle and we're going to make an arc to the bottom. We're gonna go down a little bit to the right and we're gonna do a little bit smaller because as you think about this, the circle gets shorter as it gets to the edge so are your lines. You don't want to draw outside the lines. It's better to be a little bit inside the lines than outside the lines, but you still want to get pretty close. And so you remember your circles here. And now I've got a medium one and a smaller one on the edge. And those are the vertical lines. So we're also going to do the horizontal mesh lines in the same 3D manner by taking a semicircle at the top short, medium, now this is the halfway point. We're gonna do a longer one, edge to edge. We're gonna do a medium one, shorter one, and bottom one. Now, everything we did over here, we're gonna take it over to the other side. Be mindful of your tape deck here. We have a big 3D speaker here. Get your circle going. Again, this takes some practice. Okay, once I feel like I have a pretty good circle, I'm gonna hit the button. Okay, about four or five revolutions. That seems pretty good. Again, I'm gonna do the semicircle starting at the top, concave towards the camera, going a little bit to the side, a little bit shorter, a little bit to the side of the circle, a little bit shorter there. Same thing over here, medium, short, and shorter. Okay, same thing on the horizontal mesh. Circles here, we're gonna go with a short one, a medium one, a middle one, medium one, shorter, and shortest. Okay, so now we have two 3D mesh speakers blowing music uh, towards the camera. Um, that's good, it's gonna actually pop. Uh, it's gonna be on a two plane on the box and 3D plane uh, with the speakers, that's always nice. Additional things, besides writing your name, you could draw you know, little music notes in the upper section of your corners to fill in the frame. Um, you know, you can do anything you want uh, on, the, on the edges, but I like music notes. Uh, sometimes I'll make maybe like a quick lines coming towards the camera, and that's the music uh, sound waves coming at the camera. But that's how you draw the ethereal light boom box. Please tag me if this inspires you to do the same. I look forward to seeing your creations.